r slash pro revenge kill my dog walk home forever i had this cabin in the woods high up on the mountainside when i bought the property we were able to buy all the land near the cabin except for one parcel the previous owner of the entire set of properties had a spoiled son who liked to get drunk and gamble away everything he earned so we got all but one parcel he managed to scrape up enough cash to get one parcel right below our cabin his parcel was entirely surrounded by mine there's a road going up and over the mountain that first passes by the cabin and continues on through his parcel finally ending at a pond below that. When he decided to build on the parcel I granted him an easement for power, water, and road access which I had my lawyer write up because I was busy in the city. I was trying to be a good neighbor. I only went up on weekends, so I didn't have too many problems. We managed just fine for a few years. I didn't like him much, but we kept to ourselves. Though he had a weird habit of sneering at me when he drove by in his girlfriend's car. The police came out a few times because he was fighting with his girlfriend. But he left me alone until one day during a particularly hot August. His girlfriend's left him. But he won at the tracks. He bought a new truck. He liked his new truck. He drove his new truck past my cabin all weekend long back and forth. Non-stop. I was trying to get the last part of a rather difficult book finished and didn't need a Mario Andretti wannabe tearing up my peace of mind. But, it was a private road, so any traffic problems had to be settled without the help of law enforcement. I had a sweet cokey spaniel named Mindy who stayed inside most of the time and only went outside to do her business. She was terrified of the big dodge as he went up and down the mountain throwing gravel any mud everywhere. When I went outside to tell him to stop he flipped me off, called me a few choice words and threatened to run me over if I didn't get out of his way. I just shook my head and went inside, resolving to settle his problem with a lawyer. Instead of fighting him, I didn't want to accidentally kill him. He wasn't a very big guy and all mouth anyways. I figured it was the liquor talking, so I walked Mindy and kept her inside that weekend. I had to wear headphones to tune out his act while living in a cabin in the woods. He was pissed because I bought his father's land, despite the fact that his father left him enough money to buy it several times over. He told my solicitor all of this when he wrote up the easement. My lawyer informed me of this when I contacted him about the dangerous Dodge Dirt Bag. He continued driving up and down the mountain like a maniac for the next four weekends. He did not stop even in the dead of night. He just went on and on and won. And I locked my doors hoping he wasn't so deranged that he would set my cabin on fire. Fortunately, the second weekend my lawyer told me to get video and pictures if possible. But not to confront him lest he cook up a song and dance for his own lawyer. So I set up a camera and a game by the corner of my house about 5 yards from the road. I have groceries delivered once a month to the cabin. By the local supermarket in town. The delivery person has instructions to leave the bags on the back porch. I didn't hear her knocking on the fifth weekend and so she let herself in and put the bags on the kitchen counter. While she was leaving Mindy slipped outside to do her business but couldn't get back in. I didn't hear her barking. But I did hear her yelps when the drunk bastard ran her over. I ran outside and he standing over her cursing Mindy. He'd run her over and was taking his twisted frustration out on her while she was dying. So I shoved him away and scooped her up. I then raced into town to see the vet. By the time I got to town she was cold. And I knew it was too late. So I limped back home broken hearted and angry. I took Monday off and buried her beneath an old bay tree. On Tuesday, I took the footage and the game camera stills into the city and gave them to my lawyer. The pictures were on film. So it took a couple days to get them developed. But the VCR tape told the whole story. He'd seen her beside the cabin and had veered off the road to run her down. The evil grin on red face looked demonic. I asked my lawyer if I could sue him. He said I could and we had plenty of evidence to cause him serious harm. Boo it in the meantime he'd still be living there and things would only escalate. At the time, dogs were considered property and didn't have anything in the way of rights. Still don't. Which is a pity. But I wanted a fight. And my lawyer knew that if he didn't throw me a bone I'd go back up that mountain and beat the dirtbag to death with his own wrenched off arm. My lawyer calmed me down and took out the lease agreement. In it was a standard maintenance clause. But there was also a stipulation in the easement that prohibited acts that might disturb the peace and harmony of the owner. 
It had a quit clause that automatically rescinded his easement should he persist in such acts for a month or more. My lawyer had sent him a letter to the effect the second week and didn't get a reply. The mail was registered and he had to sign for it in town at the post office. I had my lawyer serve him with a quit notice. In that state a notice to quit an easement doesn't have the same level of difficulty as a notice to quit tenancy, which can drag out for 6 months or more. If you are in violation of an easement rights and are ordered to quit it by the owner, you can appeal, but in the interim you must by law stay off the easement, and any utilities passing through can be cut off at the owner's pleasure unless doing so can cause a life threatening situation. But I didn't cut off his water and power right away, we didn't start proceedings on the suit until later. He continued to drive on the road after the order to quit, only faster and with more profanity. I got it all on tape. I told him so, and he said he didn't care. He said ugly f like me should just die. So I decided to stay away until the suit was initiated. So, a month later I had workers on the mountain put in a nice gate. Solid construction in 3 feet of concrete. I could open and close it with a garage door opener. I had barbed wire fence around the whole property. So the only way in or out was via the gate. I had a pedestrian gate put in beside the road and left that unlocked. It was about a quarter mile to the cabin and half a game that to his own place. A fairly long walk for a raging alcoholic. I got good pictures of him on the game camera that weekend. Dirtbag driving up to the gates in his big truck dirtbag trying to jimmy the lock dirtbag leaving and returning with a hacksaw to try to cut lock dirtbag leaving in frustration dirtbag returning with his truck dirtbag leaving again. Dirtbag ramming the gate uphill at full speed. Finally dirtbag through windshield laying on hood a smashed truck rolls back down the mountain. The gate didn't even bend. The truck sure did. He lived. Still not as ugly as me. But we can't get everything we want. 20 odd shots and more than enough proof to show to the judge to get a protection order and since it was a small town. The same judge wasn't too pleasant with him when took his last penny during the lawsuit. We even got his parcel and his flea infested shack. We let him keep his busted up dodge. How I inadvertently brought down a crime ring. Strap in. This is fairly long. This all happened in 2008. I was 18. I had just gotten a job at a new restaurant basically next door to me the summer after I graduated high school. The owner of the restaurant, we'll call him Ken, was an immigrant from Syria. Relevant later in the story, Ken had spent most of his life in the states managing restaurants in Boston, but moved to our area to help some of his family with their struggling business. In the beginning, things were going well. We had a steady flow of customers and some pretty good food. About a month in. However, things shifted. Ken bought a new Mercedes and house. I thought nothing of it he just moved to the area two months prior. Then things got bad. He closed on his house and made his employees move everything for him. Servers. Dishwashers. Buses. Everyone. He said if we didn't, we'd be fired. So we did. He then started taking vacations. And leaving his head chef. Who has never even been in a professional kitchen before this job. In charge. He was overwhelmed and just told us all to duck off when we had an issue. Fast forward 4 months. Ken is now not paying employees. We started losing a lot of help. It's almost the end of summer and in a few weeks I'd be quitting for college anyway. So I stuck it out. I started working 13 16 hour shifts 6 days a week. Which promised good money. I was at this point promoted to head of house and got a raise, even though I wasn't being paid. I worked about 3 weeks that way, around 84-96 hours a week at $15 an hour. I then learned that one of my only friends there, a Mexican here on a work visa, had not been paid for over a month. He told me he was afraid of quitting because he didn't want to lose his visa like Ken told him would happen. I was livid. I took my uniform off and stormed to the front of the restaurant where Ken was. It was our dinner rush, which at this point meant one or two tables of people who'd probably never come back because the food was garbage. I demanded payment for the last three weeks, around $3,600, on the spot. He blew up in front of everyone. Normally I'm passive and would back down, but not today. I was pissed. I told him that if he didn't pay me, I was calling the health board, the tax office, we were all getting paid under the table and no taxes were being filed on the business, and the police and have the place shut down the next day. 
he paid me, I gave the money to our dishwasher, he needed it more, and told him to take the rest of the night and tomorrow off. The next day, I called the immigration office in our area and explained our dishwasher's situation to see if they could help. I set up a meeting with them for him. I picked him up and away we went. When we get there, they asked if I could just fill out a statement to add to his file. Sure, I wrote everything. A few days later, I hear sirens. The restaurant is basically next door. Remember, I look outside and see Ken being handcuffed and put in the back of a squad car and the health department bolting the doors. I walk over to see what was going on. Ken was previously being investigated for fraud and my statement was the evidence that set the investigation over the edge. I read in the paper some months later about it. In the raid, they found his ledger which showed how much money he had been skimming from the business, over 6 figures, and he was charged on that. Ken was getting deported back to Syria and the rest of the sister restaurants were getting shut down pending further investigation. They never reopened. So this is the story about how a fresh 18 year old inadvertently brought down a minor crime ring in my area all because I was pissed they took advantage of a friend. Ro, you made it to the end? You're a ducking mad lad. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price. 